This video has been brought to you today by chrono.gg forward slash caddy. The link is in the description below and you better bookmark this site because every 24 hours you get the most insanely good game at the most insanely good price on Steam. And I mean like the cheapest that they could possibly be. On the screen right now are some of the classes that have been on the site before but the only way you're going to see what's up is by bookmarking the site chrono.gg forward slash caddy and seeing what deals are there for you. Thank you so much for listening and please enjoy the video. Salutations, my beautiful people, and welcome back to Bandicoot Month. Now, if you don't mind me saying so myself, I think that for a first time ever, this month has gone pretty damn well, but like all good things, it must come to an end. And all I wanted to do with this video is let you know that last week's Cad Icarus episode was the last video dedicated to the orange, fuzzy, completely erect marsupial until next June. But have no fear because it was this time last year that the Insane Trilogy came out and that does not feel that long ago to me at least. So next June we'll sneak up around the corner and stab you in the dark before you know it. Now if you don't mind I'm gonna go outside, sit back, enjoy this gorgeous weather and enjoy my birthday five days late because being an adult sucks and you're always working. Caddy? No. What? You are not resting yet. Fuck off Ant dude, I'm old now. Caddy? You're 24. I am? That is not the intro to 24. I've never seen the show. Why does anyone work with you? To make themselves look better. Fair point, I am better than you. Okay, well that point aside, you've already interrupted me, so what do you want? Well, the time just seemed right. You wanna talk about some Crash Bandicoot bosses? Does this mean we have to talk about Crash of the Titans and Mind Over Mutant? No. <sighs> Good, cause I haven't played all of them yet. You're really not missing anything. <laughs> Christ, I am not, am I? Anyway, here we are with a video of 10 bosses from the Bandicoot's history that I think are really great in no particular order, and that Ant may agree or disagree with because this is my video at the end of the day. He's just gonna come in every so often and say stuff. He's good at saying stuff. And because of that, you need to remember that you may also agree or disagree with us too. Ultimately, it's just our opinions on my video, so let's have some fun, okay? It's Bandicoot month, the best month. Also, I am limiting my list to one character per game just to save myself a couple of angry emails. Now, the funny thing about Crash, despite how we both love him and most of his games, is that as far as boss battles are concerned, this series doesn't really feature some of the best fights in video game history or even platformer history. The characters themselves may be very memorable, but most of the time the bosses are just slight extensions of regular enemies, with many like Papu Papu, Ripper Roo, and Pinstripe in Crash 1, the Komodo Bros in Crash 2, and most of the elemental masks in Wrath of Cortex being perfect examples of that, just existing as a pointless and uninteresting roadblock before the next pretty sweet platforming stage. And I can't disagree with anything there, honestly. I can readily admit that Crash doesn't have some of the grandest, almost epic and difficult bosses in any video game ever, but still. When he does them right, he does them very right, and they could be some of the most memorable and awesome parts of the game, acting as a bold old period after the sentence of a string of great stages. And in Crash 3's case, and even some of the GBA titles, they give you new power-ups for the privilege. Or on the other hand, it could be like getting through the toughest and coolest stages in Crash 2 and ending it all with flying around rocks and spinning Cortex three times in the game ending. Could be that. The point is though, like I said, we both love Crash, and we both do love the bosses, so we thought there would be no better way to cap off Cash Vanuka Month than with this list. And I can only trust that Caddy, you know well enough about what you're talking about, that I will still want to be friends with you after this video is done. And with that being said, my first pick is the fight against Mega Mix in Crash XS The Huge Adventure. We're not friends anymore. Oh come on man, how do you think I feel? You've lied to me since the day I met you! You aren't even an ant! All right, you know what, fair enough, but come on now. Getting all of the gold or platinum relics in the huge adventure is a monumental pain in the Ooh. ass. And for what, a secret boss that you don't actually fight and by beating it, it changes the ending by adding a whole two new images? Okay, well, first of all, look at this fucking thing. You can't tell me that isn't creative slash terrifying. And for a hybrid monstrosity of engine, cortex, tiny, and dingadar, Megamix doesn't mess around with you. This is a really cool concept for a crash boss. It's like a boulder chase on the side with a a very aggressive monster instead of a boulder. And if you ever let go of the Crash Dash power-up at any point, the chances of you failing are increased dramatically. It may lead to a bad ending, and it is a complete pain to get to, but I will agree, I guess, that the fight itself is a very cool idea. And it is fairly difficult. There are enemies that attack you from different altitudes to mess up your timing while you rush. You have bridges of boxes to climb, 
places that Aku Aku needs to be sacrificed in. And all this is going on while escaping from whatever the hell that thing is. Although I never really saw the point of the box gem, gotta be honest. This thing smashes absolutely everything for you, so why the hell should you be grabbing the gem as part of the fight? That is a good question. Mm. I have no idea. But eh, I guess at the very least, you could say this is the best boss in the huge adventure. There we go. Now, wasn't that better? Maybe you won't be such a cookie bastard when I pick Papu Papu for the next part of- <laughs> Okay, what? You have got to be joking now. You are just trying to get on my nerves. Uh, you didn't let me finish, and- Dick. I am going to ignore that you called me that. Not Papu Papu from Crash 1, Papu Papu from Crash Team Racing. Fair enough. Is that because this is the only time in the series he's ever been challenging? Yep, it's the best treatment he's ever got and I must applaud that. I was going to pick Nitrous Oxide here, but then remembered he's a total prick and just throws everything at you constantly and even skips the starting line, so fuck that noise. But Papu Papu is a pretty damn decent early game kart racing boss, especially with his arena. Definitely agreed. All of those sharp turns that you have there, that very risky shortcut that can have him fly ahead of the track if you mess up. And plus, he loves to throw potions at you to slow you down and slip you up, meaning that you have to find as many routes as possible around him instead of just following behind him the entire time. But hey, let's be honest here, the only reason why he's here is because it's the only time he's ever not been pathetic. And his mouth is open the entire time he's racing. And it's also the first time we ever get to hear his voice. Papu want in action to lay boom down big. That's, That's kinda racist. racist. Now since we're stuck right bang in the middle of summer, I feel it's only appropriate at this point to talk about a boss battle that's set in the middle of a freezing fucking ocean. So cold, in fact, it would give Jack and Rose a run for their money. And at least Jack and Rose didn't have to deal with sitting on a big door while being shot at by an evil polar bear in a submarine tank. But in Crash Bash, that is what the Bandicoot has to deal with. Or whoever else you decide to do the story mode with, like... Gorilla Monkey Ana's face. The Bear Minator is my favourite boss in Crash Bash because you don't only fight him with the best minigame form in the game, the slippery, slidey, shoving physics-based polar bear riding, but he also has a load of tricks up his furry polar bear sleeves. Ooh, interesting choice, Caddy. The idea of making a boss out of this single minigame and expanding it with more stuff to avoid and the boss breaking apart the same metal arena that's keeping you afloat, that's pretty cool. And it's never the same fight twice with how the physics move the arena around with the metal bear minion trying to attack you and how you strategize your shoving action without bouncing yourself too far back. And plus, you can't deny it's just great fun shooting a damn missile into the polar bear's face. Oh, absolutely. With the history Crash has with terrifying giant polar bears, this is gratifying on the same level as going to the toilet for a sit-down wee. It feels good, okay? Well then, allow me to retort your Bearminator with my evil twins, the final boss from Crash Twin Sanity. Twin Sanity has some fantastic boss battles, including Dingo Dial, the first boss against Cortex and Mecha Bandicoot. That one may be one of the best starting bosses in Crash Bandicoot history, just for the element of surprise and how shockingly aggressive that battle is for being the very beginning of the game. The fight against the evil twins, though, I just love that one even more. And I can't add any more to any of this. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, I have beaten the game and I really enjoyed it, including this final boss. It was a highlight for me despite how fucking easy it was, but this was years ago. I really don't remember enough of it to comment. What I do remember is that this was just a really cool fight and a nice way to cap off Crash's arguably wackiest adventure, and it made two of the oddest and more boring villains just that little bit more interesting. It's one of the first things that springs to my head when I think of Twin Sanity, so that has to account for something, right? Oh, absolutely. Getting to play as both Nina and Cortex throughout the entire ordeal and the game taking full advantage of all of their abilities is awesome. And since Crash does get an entire section to himself leading up to the boss fight, in my opinion, it's totally okay that he doesn't appear in the fight itself. Instead, you take control of Mecha Bandicoot making a return. Also, the music is friggin' sweet. The next boss I wanted to put here was Tiny Tiger from Crash 2, more specifically, the Insane Edition because of the tighter and trickier jumps making it a lot less of a breeze than the floatier original PS1 jumps in comparison. Aw oh, dude, yes, this is easily one of the best fights in the series. Okay, calm your tits, I'm not sure I'd say that myself, but it really is a good battle. It's one of the most unique, for sure. What you do is jump around these platforms while Tiny follows your every move, even to the point of diagonal jumping if you get too far ahead. Every so often some random platforms will fall down and you need to make sure that you stay above the box 
bottomless pit no matter what, while Tiny follows you into the abyss below from the recently dropped platform. It's as much a battle about timing, precision platforming and pressure to keep moving as it is about actually attacking Tiny himself. It is such a simple concept, but one that forces you to think one step ahead at all times, and being able to tip the scales of the fight last minute by slide jumping diagonally and making last minute turns as the platforms fall, oh it's always a fun time. I also love how every time you knock a bar of Tiny's health off, more and more platforms begin to drop until the final part where they all drop apart to one. It's so tense. And as for Tiny himself, he may be as dumb as a sack of pebbles, and I don't understand how he doesn't break his legs with every jump that he makes, but I can't help but love him anyway. All it makes me think about is how Tiny is Tiny Tiger's Tiny Tiger. Well, okay, I didn't think I would uh, be thinking about Tiny Tiger's that uh, today, um, okay, then so how about instead we talk about Cortex's giant weird head that's so big you definitely couldn't fit it inside any orifice. My god. Anyway, yeah, Cortex. In Crash 3, and once again I'm picking the PS4 version, it's a totally different kettle of kettles with fish inside them. You don't only fight your arch nemesis who's been taunting you constantly throughout the game and firing lasers at you at this point, but you can't even touch him until he drops a load of random bombs out at you, at which point you have to avoid them all exploding around you and then smack him repeatedly into the middle of a space glory hole until space itself comes everywhere <laughs> Cortex's penetrated head. Why is Caspanuka making me feel horny? That is not a question I really want to hear the answer to, so let's move on. Don't forget to mention that you aren't just fighting Cortex here, but also avoiding the outright Dragon Ball Z levels of anime explosiveness that Aku Aku and the new evil mask Uka Uka are performing right in front of you at your doorstep. Homing explosive attacks, spinning laser eyes, death tornado spinning, all while also avoiding everything else that Cortex throws at you. I love this fight, man. Definitely one of the best in the series. They hype it up so well by constantly reminding you that this new Uka Uka is Aku Aku's evil brother. And the music accompanying this final bout, it's so good. I mean, personally, I don't find this boss too difficult since the patterns of the masks fighting each other are pretty easy to nail when you've done the fight enough times, but there are still a few unpredictable elements that make the fight a little bit different every time you replay or die. It's the best Cortex boss from Classic Crash for sure, and I even love the alternate cutscenes based on if you have every gem or don't before beating Cortex. And hey, Ant, if you didn't feel horny about everything just yet, how about we jump over to the only boss that looks like a butt plug? Caddy, I want you. Seriously though, despite Entrance from Crash Bandicoot, Entranced, looking like a giant egg in a mech suit, and his jumping around in phase one of the fight reminding me a little bit too much of King K. Rule from Donkey Kong Country, for the limitations of the Game Boy Advance, the fight against Entrance manages to do quite a lot to try and kill you. You aren't kidding, the first time I reached this guy years ago, he killed me more than any other boss in Crash history that I had played up to that point. It's a two-phase fight we have here, you start with avoiding his unpredictable big jumps and luring his extendable grabby clock hand to get stuck so that you can spin him back, but then this follows onto a hover pack stage where you need to spin him into walls to bounce him around into a little hole so that you can cover him in lava. And this is not only way harder than it looks, but also involves a ton of health to chip down and even some elements of bullet hell. It's nothing impossible, but damn if it isn't tricky for Crash, especially with a slow moving hover pack. Working alongside fake Crash for the first time is pretty cool too, since he is the one that ends up pulling the lava lever whenever you're able to pinball entrance into the pit below. And since it's not just a fight about waiting for a window to attack and following patterns, it is always different every time you come back into the second phase, and it can last as long as you'd like it to, really. For a brand new villain on a portable system that was only able to render 2D crash adventures, Entrance had a fairly solid debut. Also, fuck this face he does. It makes me very uncomfortable. He's looking at me like a teacher who caught me cheating during a test. Caddy, hold me. No time for that now, Anton Deck! Because now we're moving on to Embryo from Crash 1, again from the Insane trilogy. I just prefer the controls, okay? Also, it looks better also you're all wrong and shut up. This is easily the trickiest fight from the original Crash because of how much shit it expects you to deal with for only having a run and jump command. Dude, I just love the arena so much. Crash 1 did the best job at making you feel like you're actually scaling the mountain that Cortex's castle is on. And in the Insane Trilogy, it even explains how the green blobs were hurting him the entire time, instead of just, yeah, you bounce on him and, uh... 
he loses health somehow. I will say that when Brio transforms into the Hulk and starts charging at you, the hitbox as you try to bounce on his head is a bit too tight for my liking, but I suppose that you could look at that as a slight bit of extra challenge for what is essentially the final phase of just jumping on his head a few times. You just gotta remember to leave it until the very last second to bounce on him in the Insane Trilogy, and you will be golden. Just like Brio's impression of a Smash Brothers hammer power-up. While we're still talking about the Insane Trilogy as well, let's move on to Give Me The Goods and Shove Off Dinger Dial. The dance of avoiding his overhead shots and then baiting him into shooting down his own shield without getting hit yourself. In Crash 3, I never found this fight too bad. I mean, it was impossible when I was a kid. He was way too terrifying. But on the Insane Trilogy, his AI is even worse. It's been tweaked so much to the point where I was really caught off guard by how much he moves and how fast his mind can change. On the part when you're trying to bait him, it's the tensest fucking thing ever trying to figure out where he'll stop and jump jump you with a burst of flames, and on the Insane Trilogy it feels like he's reading your mind he moves that jarringly. Dingo Dial is by far one of the coolest characters in the franchise. It's a dingo crossed with a crocodile. You can sign me right up for that. And in Crash 3, he has a pretty sweet arena. There's sweet music along with that, and it is massively satisfying to get him to shatter as many of his own ice barriers as possible, or you could just be a massive jerk and spin, slide, jump right over them to end the fight as fast as you can. Whatever Flingo dials, your dingo dial. The whole battle is like an Old West standoff after escaping a shootout, and hitting him when his defenses are down, giving you mere moments to escape the remaining portions of his shield before he explodes and your stupid old bandicoot face makes it a fight full of tense moments and fast kinetic action. And that's the thing, if you want to make the smack and escape from him even safer for you so you don't blow up, you have to then spend longer in the baiting section, which is really, really tense because you need to get rid of more of his shield. And plus, you even get the double jump for beating him, and that's just awesome. Before we finish off though, Ant, I wanted to give a couple of shout outs to my honourable mentions for this list. I know this list wasn't in any particular order, but still, these were ones I didn't really want to put in the top 10. I thought Entropy from Crash 3 was a fantastic fight, as is Crunch, weirdly enough, in Wrath of Cortex, the final boss, because it forces you to use all of your power-ups from the other bosses before it, and also I kind of like Ripperoo from Crash 2. It seems a little bit over insane when you first play it with all the TNT and Nitro exploding everywhere, but then once you played it more than one time, you know the patterns, you know it's not that difficult to avoid, and yeah, it's not that hard, so it was too easy for me to stick on the list. I think we laid them all out there. The original Crash games have some pretty solid bosses. I gotta say though, one of my honorable mentions is Ripperoo from Crash 1. It's not a good fight, but I still like it. And with that, I have no doubt in my mind when I say my favorite boss in all of Cash Banuka is indeed N fucking Gin Antonic from Crash 3. The original Crash 3. Not just because of my nostalgia, but also because they made him slower and less aggressive in Insane, so I'll just go with the best version of the fight, which is definitely this one. It's a spaceship against a giant mech. It's got constant barrages of explosive attacks, moments to shoot and moments to avoid, weak points being available and closing up at random times, forcing you to change tactics, great visuals and sound effects on both versions of the game, kick-ass music, both of you using health bars. For Crash, it has everything you could want for a great encounter, and the funny thing is that it's not even the core platforming that's the boss battle here. This whole fight feels like if Life Force on NES mixed with Star Fox and made it about bandicoots and strange ginger men with missiles sticking out of their heads and it's the most badass, epic, loud, non-stop action fight you'll go up against in the entire Crash series as you pilot Coco in a spaceship on the fucking moon avoiding dozens and dozens of missiles while putting yourself in danger in order to attack his weak spots. And that is only the first phase. After that mech suit, you gain more attack power with Pura the Tiger as your co-pilot, but Engine also gets way more powerful attacks, and you either need to destroy or avoid before your health bar whittles down to 0%. And if you remain still at any point during this, you may as well just quit and start over. Crash 3 manages to splice loads of different vehicle styles into the platforming, box-breaking gameplay that we all know and love really well if you ask me. And the ultimate proof of this risky experiment for the third game in the series working perfectly well is in this one part of the game, and there aren't even any boxes to break. And speaking of that second phase as well, in the Insane Trilogy, the transition animation with Pura getting attached, that's just rad. Yeah, but the fight isn't as good on that game if you were paying attention. Ah, okay, so you, you're just rude. In both fights, Engine still pelts you with a ton of bullets practically non-stop, making for a very fun and engaging one-on-one -on -one battle. And you still get the awesome Fruit Bazooka for beating him, and you cannot take that away from us, Jim Bandicatta Karuka. Okay, then I'm gonna go back 
outside and get some sleep. Happy Bandicoot Month, everybody. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where do you think you're going? This is Crash Bandicoot Month, mister. I am not done with you yet. I demand a boss fight right now. You'll regret it. The hell I will. You started off this list with a Crash Bandicoot GBA boss. That cannot go unpunished. You get back here right now unless you're a big fat chick. <laughs> Well, you can't say I didn't warn him. Thank you so much for joining in with me on the first ever annual Bandicoot Month, everybody. And please leave your likes and dislikes and comments below to let me know if you enjoyed it or not, because I really enjoyed making it. And I'd like to see if everyone wants me to keep it going. If it's your birthday today while watching this video, then happy friggin' birthday to you. Please remember to stay beautiful. And you know what I'm going to be doing for the rest of the summer? That's easy. I'm going to be playing Crash Bandicoot the Insane Trilogy on the Nintendo Switch when it finally comes out. And that means I'll be able to play Crash 1, where Crash Bandicoot is sexually inappropriate with a pig in HD on the bus. That's all I've ever wanted from my life. Special thanks to every single person on the screen right now that has helped support this channel via Patreon in the description below. And special, special thanks to the top tier supporters. Omama2, Basil, Patrick Ferguson, Robert Alamsha, I Have a Portal Gun, Gamer Man, Matthew Hubble, Chumbawamba, Cyberpunk Symphony, Star Ira Lance J, Sakari, The Pinkinator, Binary Code, Exopaz, Thomas Olsen, Daniel Leon, Jane Ives, Mitchell Reed, AD Thornton Smith, Oblivion Rising, Ellen Ripley, Kirsten B, QB, Nathan Young, and Nicole Gunara. Thank you so much. Every single one of you.